This audience could not stop laughing for no reason, which made this legendary violinist stumble in his notes. Hey guys, what's going on? Violin Mechanic here. I hope you're all having an amazing day. I sure was, until I watched this video. I watched it like 20 minutes ago, and I wasn't even planning on making a reaction video tonight, but I just had to, because this video made my blood boil. Now, honestly, I'm not the type of person that gets angry very easily, and my doctor said that when I get angry, I have to share my frustration uh, to other people. Um, here I am, talking to you guys. Today, we're gonna be watching a performance by none other than Ning Feng. One of the greatest violinists in the world playing oh, what do you think he's gonna play god save the king by niccolo paganini now i can guarantee you that only a handful of violinists can play this piece and you're basically never gonna hear a performer play this piece because of its sheer astronomical difficulty and if you do well consider yourself very lucky i've never heard someone play god save the king live let me know down in the comments if you have but let's get right into this Very serious. Now everyone's waiting for him to play some kind of encore. Usually performers keep their encore as a secret, kind of like a teaser almost. It's just like that cherry on top of the recital or the concert. It just makes it so much more special uh, when you don't know what he's gonna be playing. And he's about to reveal what piece he's gonna play and everyone's looking at him. And then you see this guy. <laughs> He immediately knows. Oh, he's playing God Save the King. He's like, oh, I know this piece. <laughs> he's just preparing himself to be enjoyed. <laughs> now, every string player knows that this piece is the most technically difficult piece on the violin. Um, there is no harder piece than this. Uh, this is why some of these musicians have this kind of reaction, because they're like, whoa, nobody plays this piece because it's so difficult. And if you hear this piece live, I guarantee you that it's one of the greatest blessings you'll ever have. Um, now, there's two reasons why they can be laughing out of sheer excitement and astonishment, like, whoa, this guy's going to play this. And the other option is they're laughing because, well, it's the anthem of England, uh, and it's a very recognizable piece. I think this concert was played in New Zealand. Those are the two options. And you're going to find out in a second that, unfortunately, it's the second option. The people in the audience are absolutely clueless to what this man is playing. They have no idea of its incredible difficulty, and they're basically just expecting to be entertained. Let's keep watching. Oh, wow. Beautiful pits. Beautiful thirds. Listen to this again. The, the audience laughs. He's playing incredibly difficult tents, followed by trills, followed by thirds. And the audience is laughing at the midst of this. Okay, fine. I agree with you. For a non-musician, it, it might sound very joyful and, and very pleasant. Da -da 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 -da. It's almost like a giggle. And if it makes you giggle, it's because he musically expressed it in such a way to incite that giggling feeling out of you. And this is another reason why he's such a great performer. He's able to tickle you with his notes without even touching you. And you're giggling because he's articulating all of these passages so clearly. Our Asian friend in the background, he's like, wow. He's really internalizing it. He's just looking at the ground and he's just trying to absorb all of this difficulty. You can see that he has so much more reverence and respect to this piece and look at that he's like come on guys are you serious did you see him he just turns around why are you even clapping this is not the end of the piece you're in for a roller coaster when listening to paganini do you think paganini is going to limit his piece into a few bars of course not why are you clapping in the middle of the piece look he's pissed the dude's pissed. He's like, wait, hold on. He doesn't continue on because probably, I assume, he wants the microphones to catch every single note he's playing. He doesn't want the applause of the audience to mess up the recording. But as this video goes, you're going to see that he visibly gets more and more uncomfortable and annoyed. If you're enjoying this video so far, please consider subscribing. We are like 500 subscribers from 20,000, which is absolutely amazing. Okay, I'll tell you what, guys. If this video gets 500 likes, 
I will live stream myself sight reading God Save the King. I think that's going to be my first live stream on this channel. Hey, let's make it happen. 500 likes. Share this video. Excellent bow control. Those patterns are so difficult to execute. Now you can see just by the looks of him, he is incredibly focused, incredibly concentrated on his piece. And it can be very easy to get distracted when performing, especially by the audience. Now, most audiences out there are very respectful. You know, you turn off your cell phone. Now you wait until the end of a movement to cough, but you don't laugh in the middle of a piece, especially if it's such an insanely difficult piece. Any sound wave that you produce when hearing someone play God Save the King is literally a disgrace. I'm gonna go as far as saying this. Now this next part of the piece contains a lot of ricochet. Uh, now if you don't know what ricochet is, um, it's essentially uh, when you have to bounce your bow uh, several times on the string. And they're followed by inconsistent ricochet bowings. Um, first one is you have to get five of them. One, two, three, four, five. One, one, two, three. <laughs> this is not how you should be practicing, by the way. Bow control here is just so incredibly difficult because um, you have to basically hit the A and E string and then jump to your G string without hitting the D string in between. And then followed by tenths. This is just to put in perspective the sheer difficulty of this piece. you feel if you did your best like your very best at something and you're skillfully showing off your art to someone and they just laugh and instead of sitting back in your chair in awe like our cello friend right here people are laughing and giggling i've never seen a more disrespectful audience you only clap when there's a perfect cadence when the performer has visibly finished making sounds on his instrument and thirdly if it's not obvious enough when the performer takes off his instrument and holds it in front of him or for pianists when they take off their hands completely from the keyboard again they, tr they, they, they these people don't learn i really don't mean to nitpick his performance because he's such a legendary performer but you can see that he misses that note he messed up this note because the audience laughed again perhaps even especially the people in the front it really throws you off friends imagine like doing a public speech in front of someone or in front of a group of people and every time you finish a phrase or you begin a sentence they start laughing or start giggling and, and right up in front of you, it's gonna throw you off. And, and this is all performed by memory too. This variation contains extremely difficult pizzicatos, mostly because the strings are so thin and they're so difficult to grip on, especially if you have all of your fingers already placed on the fingerboard and then you're trying to make a sound. Once you get to your third finger, that's really when gripping the string begins to be a struggle. You can barely play it without accidentally hitting the other string. And as you can see, the sheer amount of notes he's actually playing, it can look comedic. Oh yeah, he's playing with his fingers. That, that's so cool, that's so funny. Yeah, but do you know how hard it is? I just wanted to quickly give you another camera angle so that you can see how difficult this passage actually is. It's really difficult to pinch the string. One thing that I can kind of give you as advice is try and almost have a hook-like shape with your finger, keeping it nice and round uh, and kind of like shooting it up. I, I kind of cut my nails yesterday, so usually I recommend doing this with <laughs> longer nails uh, so that you can grip the string better. But essentially you want to kind of like just 
pluck it up and do kind of like an up motion. That's going to kind of help you have more clearer pizzicatos. You have no idea how much this movement tires your tendons. This is a choreography for the fingers. It is absolutely intense. Your fingers have to cram themselves in such small positions. For those of you who've been rock climbing, sometimes you have to like just grab a little crevice and stick your finger inside and just hold on for dear life. This is a succession of chords that require immense preparation and immense speed. You can see how uncomfortable <laughs> my hand positions here look. The sheer stretches here uh, that really make me regret being a musician in the first place. Look at our cello friend here. He just has his eyes closed and he's just admiring the music. Hey, and if you're new to this channel or you're not a musician, I, I hope I'm not guilt tripping you. Especially if you think, oh, I, I you know, I he plays really well. I don't know. I, you know. It doesn't seem wrong to clap in those spots. Generally, when you're listening to a classical performance, you don't really do that because it kind of interrupts the whole vibe. Let's just say you're on a first date with someone. You know, you're sitting at a table with them and your phone just keeps on buzzing, keeps on interrupting you. It's going to ruin the vibe. So it's the same thing here. The more you kind of like clap or make sounds or interrupt, first of all, it kind of ruins the recording, which really sucks for the performer because it's just such a memorable uh, moment in his career and his life. Um, and secondly, it also ruins their concentration. And this piece requires a lot of that. Very cheeky on his behalf to finish that piece with a fortissimo to startle the audience, especially those who, who are making sounds. He's like, oh, you want sound? I'm going to make you a sound. Ooh. Look at him. He is disappointed. Oh, man, he is disappointed. Because he knew how much that audience distracted him. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> the way he's clapping, he surely enjoyed himself. 